Yes, sir. So I've heard caregivers say, I feel like I've lost my best friend. How do you respond to that? How do you respond to that as a person with dementia? Well, I don't. It's ever happened to me. <laughs> I've never heard that. Uh, I don't think. I don't think people with dementia are aware, mostly, of what's happening to their interpersonal life. Because it, in some sense, it's comforting to them to pull back. Because now I'm not as exposed. And it's worth a trade-off, I think. They, they think, they feel it's worth a trade-off. And we don't have the capacity that we used to have to step outside ourselves and see what's happening. So I think we need help in that. Now the question is, are we going to be enabled or are we going to be disabled? Because caregivers, friends, um, are looking for ways that we need to be disabled because they want us to be safe. And so we don't talk about how you're going to get around when you can't drive anymore. We talk about when are you going to stop driving. We don't give the fact that you can't drive anymore another thought. But it's, it's one of the most debilitating things that happens to, to especially to men who are used to driving around is just one day you can't drive anymore. And when I stop driving, the next weekend, I ran out of ketchup. Now for me to run out of ketchup would be for you to run out of blood. Uh, so I said to my wife, uh, when you go to the store, would you get some ketchup? Sure. Well, she didn't go shopping that weekend. So I went to my backup bottle of ketchup. And pretty soon that was empty. So I wrote a note and put it on the counter. I really need a bottle of ketchup. <laughs> and about three weeks later, I got a bottle of ketchup. But it was the wrong kind. It wasn't Heinz. <laughs> you know, all other ketchup is just red water compared to Heinz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know how I got off on that story. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that was a very good question that you asked about friends, but I can't remember what it was. It's, I, the, the sense for a caregiver of a loved one, family member, that the caregiver is losing her best friend, it is, it's not the same anymore. It's a, it's, and it's true, it's, it's not. not the same anymore feels horrible to be on the receiving end of that kind of a comment, but how do you, and you, but, and I understand it, it makes perfect sense, how do you deal with it? Well, I guess I deal with it by saying, um, when I think back on our relationship, there never was a time when we both weren't changing. And, and then it was the same for years and years and years. I know there are couples that it is the same for years and years and years. It's never been that way for me. Uh, I've wanted it to be that way. I don't want you know, it to be easier if it was a more predictable sort of thing. I, I could understand you better, but that's just not the way we live our lives. That's all my family does. So that would give me some soul and some, some, I feel better about it now, the fact that uh, we're always changing. And this probably isn't the best time to point that out. <laughs> uh, and there are times when I'm more competent to, to deal with something than my wife is. And there are times when she's more competent to deal with things that I, I don't. I lived in a kind of a father knows best family where I was in charge, but my wife was uh, the power behind the throne, you know, and <laughs> essentially what I did was confirm whatever my wife said. Uh, 
and that's how we lived our lives. But yes, I understand there's a sense of loss. And I would fall back on the best friends approach. I don't know if you've read that book it, by David Troxell and Virginia Bell called Best Friends. They've written the same book about 13 times. They just put a new cover on top of it. <laughs> best friends do this, best friends do that. Uh, and what happened was Virginia's uh, father, she's an a, a old southern belle, her father had dementia. And he got to the point where he didn't uh, like Virginia, and no one understood why. But she wanted to have a daddy, and she couldn't have a daddy because he didn't act like daddy. So she decided, well, if I can't be his daughter, I could be his best friend. I could change and still get my father, but he wouldn't come to me in the name of daddy. But I get those feelings that he understood me and he was somebody I could go to. We just have a different language that we couch it in now. And so that's, that's what they would recommend, is you be a best friend to the person. Now if you have a best friend, and you don't see him for 10 years because he was in jail, when he gets out of jail, he's still your best friend. It's like you didn't have, it, time didn't even pass when I picked him up outside and brought him home for dinner. It, it, it didn't make any difference. He's my friend. Why would I even ask the question? Well, because, you know, he shot two people and robbed a bank. <laughs> and uh, Yes, I know that, but he's still your friend. So I guess I would say be best friends. You have to reframe it. Don't bring the marriage vows out because they're not appropriate now to define our relationship. But it doesn't mean that we don't have appropriate means that will still meet our needs. <coughs> yes, sir. What I hear you saying is that life itself is a terminal disease. We all have it. But Alzheimer has a bad rap, in my opinion. Um, don't exactly know why it's better to have cancer or some other disease, but it seems to be okay to have those things. I'm wondering if there's any organization or, or author or movement towards having us all appreciate we all have a terminal disease. I'm a healthy caregiver, but I could go before my, my dear spouse here. Uh, we don't seem to hear a lot about that philosophy. <coughs> Well, that philosophy has been taken over, I think, by the kind of a fr the fringe movement. You know, well, you, you have to use uh, rocks or uh, stones or uh, pebbles or you have to use special sounds of a gong. Or, and uh, it gets away from the humanity, I think. It, those movements are, tend to make people more isolated in order to feel themselves. And we're looking for ways to not be isolated in order to feel ourselves. Well, we can't feel ourselves the way we used to feel because those ways of feeling are not available to us now. So I've got to figure out some new ways that I can love, still love you. And that's a challenge to me. But it's always been a challenge. It's just that changes didn't come as fast as they're coming now. Changes weren't as unpredictable as they are now. I knew as soon as you found your old fraternity friends that you'd want to go out with them drinking every Friday night. I saw that coming. I didn't see it coming that you were going to slap me. I didn't see it coming that you were going to walk away from me. And so that makes us uneasy that we can't predict a, a situation. And when you can't predict a situation, the best thing to do is to avoid it. That's, the, that's how we've dealt it all through life. But these are pretty seminal, basic situations in terms of communication with each other, uh, loving each other, and my basic needs for friendship. <coughs> 